when you, most people think of memory, they think of uh, DDR, which is what is commonly used, of course, in uh, desktop computers and servers. It's, it's the mainstream commodity memory technology uh, that represents most of the market. Uh, DDR3 is, is right now, of course, the, the mainstream computer system memory technology. It was originally defined to be able to run at up to 1600 uh, megabits per second, uh, but now the specification allows for up to 2133. Uh, it may get pushed to uh, 2.3 gigabits, uh, and there might be some, uh, some specialty uh, embedded applications where they try and overclock it. The big push in DDR3 right now is to bring it to lower and lower power levels. So there's three different voltages, uh, classes that you can get the memories in, one and a half, 1.35, uh, and one and a quarter volt uh, versions are, are being defined. Uh, DDR3 is, is going to be the first technology uh, where you're going to see commonly used what are called 3D stacks. And this is actually something that, that's, that is at the core of the revolution in, in memory technology that, uh, that, that I'll be talking about today. DDR4 is the uh, next generation that's currently in definition. It's defined right now to go up to 2.4 gigabits per second. The uh, goal is to reach 3.2 gig. Uh, whether it will actually get to that speed or not uh, because of some of the physics limitations uh, is, is undecided yet. To reach these higher speeds, there's a uh, set of protocols that allow the controller and the DRAM to train uh, each other and figure out what the optimal uh, parametric settings such as drive strength uh, and timing are. This is really pushing memory technology um, to the next level and, and it does require those kinds of changes in approach. Uh, of course GDDR is used mostly in uh, graphics boards that go into desktop computers but also it's being used or, or being contemplated to be used in embedded systems as well. So uh, within uh, JEDEC, the latest generation uh, is GDDR5. So right now you can get uh, GDDR5 memories, uh, which are running at, at about six gigabits per second. In the next year, that'll probably get pushed to seven. There's even some talk of maybe uh, taking it up to eight. Uh, in order to reach that, level of speed, there's an extensive amount of, of training sequences and, and power on operations that are used to optimize the, the connection, the, the parametric interface uh, between the, the controller and the DRAM. Uh, GDDR5 is basically used only in a point-to-point -point, uh, connection, which, which also helps with signal integrity. Um, and it, it was really the first to incorporate this uh, CRC feedback so that errors uh, could be identified uh, per chip and the controller can take appropriate action. So there's a, uh, there's a provision basically for transaction retry. If the controller sees a problem, then it uh, is expected to decide whether it needs to say there was a write failure that it needs to try and rewrite the data. So if you turn the dial the other way and have a goal of optimizing power uh, especially for battery-operated devices, you get LPDDR. And so this, this is, uh, again, a volatile memory, but the architecture and the interfaces have been optimized to reduce power consumption. So the focus there is, is really on being able to uh, enter very low power modes and exit them very quickly, to be able to adjust the clock rates uh, to uh, lower or higher values depending upon what the, what the load in the system is. And then, of course, they're all packaged slightly differently. On the mobile side, uh, LPDDR2 is the mainstream memory technology. Uh, right now, it's, it's running at about uh, 800 megabits per second. Um, the standard defines operation up to 1067. Now, there is currently in development a uh, LPDDR3 specification, uh, which is, uh, has a goal of reaching 1600 uh, megabits per second. When that would actually be available is, you know, is, is not certain right now, but my guess is it would be probably sometime uh, late next year. One new type of memory uh, interface that's not being defined in JEDEC right now is called LLI. It stands for Low Latency Interface, and that's actually being driven out of an organization called MIPI, 
which is responsible for a lot of the battery operated and mobile device interface standards. And so LLI is, is really going to be one of the first uh, true high-speed serial interfaces that's designed to go from uh, communicate memory traffic from one ASIC to another. There's another category which, which, we, uh, which you might think of as specialty memory. Basically, this is static memories. Often now the, uh, the static memories will have two ports. And so the, the common term used in the industry for static memories is now QDR, which means quad data rate. But basically, it describes a two-port memory uh, that you can read and write to simultaneously. So in a sense, uh, you can get data in and out at four times the, uh, the core clock rate. On the non-volatile side, there's flash memory. And there are several different kinds of flash memory. Uh, you've probably heard of NAND and NOR flash. There's an enormous amount of innovation going on in the non-volatile memory area to, to try and deal with some of the limitations in the commodity flash memory environment. Typically, it has to do with having to write an uh, entire block of memory all at once rather than being able to overwrite individual bytes. Uh, and as the memory capacities expand, the, what's called the endurance of that device goes down. So uh, NOR flash, uh, you may be able to uh, write uh, 100,000 or more times before it wears out. Uh, NAND flash, uh, for the highest capacities, you may only be able to write uh, as many as, as 1,000 times. And as the capacity increases, the, this endurance factor goes down. And this is where the six type of memory comes into play, uh, which is basically managed flash uh, or, or flash uh, or mass storage devices, uh, which can be either embedded, that is, they go into a package that is soldered into uh, a system, such as a camera or a phone, or removable, um, in which you, you have the flash memory on a card. It could be a USB device or a, or a small uh, plastic package things such as a uh, compact flash or, or secure digital or a multimedia card. The next generation of those is being defined right now by JEDEC and uh, the Secure Digital Association. Uh, one is called UFS, uh, one is called uh, UHS2. Uh, neither of those are available now, but uh, that is the next generation that's being worked on. So these are really the six basic types of memory technology, and there are fundamental changes and fundamental limits that, that, that each of these are hitting uh, that are really driving this, uh, this revolution in design and test. 